So thinking back, you know, to when you started at PlayStation, like, what do you wish you had known about the game industry when you got started there? Um, so what I wish I had known, what I didn't realize is how far sure. I speak for every single recruiter. And <laughs> I, I speak for every single recruiter in games that says, please, for the love of all that is holy, please put <laughs> the biggest change that I've been through in my career um, is unfortunately getting laid off. And I think a lot of people can resonate with this. It's it's real tough. Yeah. Um, hey, everyone. Sorry for the delay. I've been busy with summer trips and events and stuff, but I'm back. And this episode's going to be worth it. It's with Alex Gombos, who's formerly a PlayStation and a leading voice in the talent acquisition field. With over a decade of recruitment experience, she's led recruiting efforts and strategies for notable AAA studios, including Firewalk Studios, and PlayStation Studio Creative Arts, while also supporting hiring efforts at Santa Monica Studio, Naughty Dog, Insomniac Games, and Bluepoint Games. As a LinkedIn top voice, Alex shares her expertise and insights with the gaming community through her series, Ask Alex Anything. Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments section. Plus, if you're interested in us making a bonus episode, about dealing with stress of being laid off and, and things like that. As always, click on the subscribe and like buttons if you find this episode useful. And a shout out to Mark, my latest uh, Patreon Gain Wisdom subscriber. Hey, how you doing tonight? I am doing absolutely fantastic. How are you doing? Doing great. Yeah, thanks for being on. Um, so what part of the country are you calling in from, or the world, I should say? Yeah, so I am on the West Coast uh, in California. I am calling in from sunny San Diego. Ah, some of the best weather in the country. Every time I'm there, I'm like, it's beautiful. I can ride my motorcycle 11 months out of the year. Why do I not live uh -huh. here? So, yeah, you definitely picked a good mm -hmm. choice. So, uh, you know, getting into this, like, what was your most recent job title and role? Yeah, so uh, most recently, I was a talent acquisition recruiting manager. Uh, mm -hmm. at PlayStation, specifically supporting mm -hmm. the uh, game development studio side of the company. Wow, that's great. Yeah, yeah, they have a huge studio in San Diego, right? There's hundreds of folks. Yep. There. Yeah, so um, in San Diego, uh, they've got uh, San Diego Studio, who does MLB The Show. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they have uh, their um, PlayStation Studios Creative Arts, which Arts, which is their support departments that partners with their other first party studios. So they've got like a visual art leg, uh, music, sound, creative. Uh, so really, really heavily involved in, of course, those and, and some other studios when I was there as well to, to support recruiting. Cool. Yeah, there, there was a, a co-worker buddy of mine uh, from way back midway, Chuck Gislande, who headed up the MoCap studio. Awesome person. Yeah. yeah. You know, you know yeah. Chuck? Yeah. yeah. I do He's know Chuck. Yes, fantastic. very well. So yeah. we partnered a lot on his hiring. Um, yeah, amazing guy. Super talented. And uh, yeah, I see him doing great things on LinkedIn. So no, it's cool. Small world. So thinking back, you know, to when you started at PlayStation, like, what do you wish you had known about the game industry when you got started there? Um... So what I wish I had known, what I didn't realize is how fun it would be. Um, <laughs> what I also didn't realize uh, is how, um, I mean, and just, just like any, any other industry that goes you know, through changes, um, that it too could be a little unstable. Is there anything I could have done in hindsight? No, but um, I think I went in with rose-colored glasses because I was just so excited to get into the industry. And I was like, what is better than this? Nothing can ever go wrong. <laughs> right, like, I'm in heaven. This is the greatest thing in the world. It's going to last. What? Yay. Yeah, right. Um, no, yeah, and that's a great company to work for. Um, yeah, it and just shows that, you know, mm -hmm. oh, sorry, I, I was going to say yeah. it just shows that, like, you know, any company can be affected with, you know, the change in the market and everything. So, right. um, yeah, I, was, I had an amazing time working there. Yeah, and that's a good point, too. It, it's not isolated. It's, you know, it's kind of going on across the board. Um, yeah. you, you know, and you cover this a lot in your, on your LinkedIn, which is fantastic. Like, anyone watching or listening to this, follow her on LinkedIn. Like, Yo. do it. <laughs> um, um, but like, you know, what advice would you give someone now here in 2024 trying to get that first job? 
Yeah. So um, honestly, it's the same advice that I give myself. And it doesn't Mm -hmm. matter if it's 2024. It doesn't matter if it was 2012. And it doesn't matter, in my opinion, if Mm -hmm. it's, you know, 2054. Um, For me, my biggest advice, uh, first and foremost, network. And I would say in this day and age and technology, um, you know, you can network a lot by building your online presence. And I have some notes here, if you don't mind, if you see my eyes move there. Um, So building your online presence, um, connecting with other people in the industry, Mm -hmm. connecting with game developers and recruiters. So it's really good, in my opinion, to connect with the people who are making the game on the team. Um, you know, hiring uh, uh, managers and decision makers. Um, Mm -hmm. But it's also really good to connect with people like me, like recruiters, um, because, you know, we're kind of that first stop when it comes to posting the job, reviewing resumes. And so if if you already connected to a recruiter and um, they're aware of you and know, you know, kind of what you're looking for, that's always a good thing. Right. Um, And then talking about the way the market is going, especially and just being flexible um, and open to adjacent industries that allow you to gain transferable skills and experiences so you can build your skill set. Um, mm-hmm. So like, for example, if you're a student or a recent grad, um, you could be eligible for internships, right? So looking to get into the game industry, you just graduated an internship is like a really good way to get your foot in the door, but not everyone has that opportunity. It's been really tough for those recent students or recent grads, I'd say, like, right, who but first it was the pandemic uh, and right. then it was the state of the game industry market. Like, I, I can't yeah. even imagine graduating, um, you know, within the last five years. And so if there are apprenticeships, if there are freelance or contract work, um, I'm mm-hmm. just thinking anything that like can give you that valuable work experience, even if it's an adjacent industry or an adjacent type role. Uh, I contracted for the first, you know, year and a half of of my role um, or with when I stepped into games. And so, you know, I think it's pretty it's pretty typical for the industry to to start with that contract kind of project based um, hire. Mm -hmm. Um, But, yeah, networking and and just kind of getting to know people in the industry. Yeah, no, that's all great advice. And and yeah, then you you also then add stuff on your resume and your portfolio. Right. Mm Because for most people listening, artists, designer, programmers, and stuff like that, you know, you need a portfolio. Um, yeah, so you, you yeah. get that work, you can put stuff in there and you can show, you know, it's always discouraging. We see a resume with no portfolio link. You're like, you know, let me see the thing. Sure. I speak for every single recruiter <laughs> and I, I speak for every single recruiter in games that says, please, for the love of all that is holy, please put your <laughs> your portfolio or your GitHub yes. or your website link. It's it's just uh, how totally. can especially if you're hiring an artist, right, or like yeah. a programmer. How are we supposed to um, push your resume forward, your application forward, if we if we don't see what you're working on? Um, yeah. So yes, please, please, and make it. They make that link clickable. Please, please, please. Yes, yes, <laughs> right, right. Just it's clickable. And it goes right and there and just yeah. click and not, not have to copy and paste, not be like, is this a Google drive? Am I going to get like virus? Yeah. Right. Like, you know, especially if you're art, you know, art station, it's free. Art station. Art station. Yes. It's true. Uh, and so to, to that point too, cause I, I want, I want people to, to remember that sending a large file can get flagged by um, yes. IT. Right. So even if I like, even if I wanted to open that, that insanely large file and download it to my computer, which I don't, um, I might not be able to anyway. Yeah, exactly. Right. Right. So, so, so so get it on ArtStation or or get a Wix site or, you you know, there's, there's so many options right now. Yeah. Yeah. People sending large attachments or not having links or just having these Google drives that you're supposed to just randomly click on, Uh, you know, put it on the top too, like make it easy, right? Like, you know, make it yeah. easy for us, not like, where is this thing on the resume? And I got a stack of, you know, 40 other resumes to get through the next 30 minutes. Like, make it yeah. remove friction. That's something I always say. That's, like, stop the friction. It's a good point, right? Like, the format of the resume is mm-hmm. is also just important, right? So you've got, like, your name and your contact information. And I want to see that portfolio either yep. right there or, like, over to the right. It's, it's where this point being in games for six and a half years and, and looking at resumes for that long, I came from the biotech industry. I came 
from, um, so before PlayStation, I used to uh, recruit for biotech and it was a mm. very different way that we reviewed resumes in that type of, in that type of industry. I would yeah. review a, a resume from bottom to top. So I was looking at what school you went to. I was potentially looking at your GPA, your career trajectory, you know, mm. specifically our creative resumes. I'm looking top down. I yep. like it, within seconds, I am clicking on your portfolio at the same time that I'm like scanning your resume. So right. yeah, that's, it's really important. Right. Because human beings do this, right? Like all the TikTokers are out there saying, beat the ATS. Here's a trick way to beat the, like, no, there's, there's a human there clicking on it and oh, wanting I... to see it. Right. There, there's no like trick. There, there, there's no like hack for getting around the ATS and getting an interview. It's like, have a clean resume, have your, have your link at the top and make mm -hmm. it easy for us to see what you've done and then line up your experience compared to the requirements of the job and just kind of like AB it as yeah. you're kind of going through you know, and being like, yeah, let's move this person forward, you know, that kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah. 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 Super the only like. thing that's going to ensure you don't get your resume reviewed because an ATS can completely screw up a format if it's not a uh, Word doc or PDF. Mm -hmm. um, and please no PNGs and JPEGs because I can guarantee the ATS is not going to load that thing the right way. Right. Um, right. And it's just the, and then your keywords are not searchable. Mm hmm. Because it's an yeah. image. I can't search an image. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's a great point. And I'm in Greenhouse, you know, every day. And at least on Greenhouse, when I get that weird, like, I can't read this resume, I'm like, oh, I got to download it. You know, I got to look. And then it's usually a Word doc. So it seems like PDFs being platform agnostic tends to be a little bit more... Yeah safe readable or, and, you know it won't screw your format up too like yeah. i've seen i've seen some it's it's been rare but i've seen some ats's screw up the format of the resume yeah i guess um, all like munged and like the letters are yeah like, what am i looking at and then i gotta download it and it, yeah yeah yeah, Good yeah. and then the hiring manager doesn't understand that it was like lost in translation and then they could potentially not rate, but like, uh they'll be like oh well you know this resume format is it, it's not as clean you know yeah, it's Who frustrating knows, but... me. I, I shouldn't talk to this yeah. person, right? <laughs> yeah, make it easy for us, right? Like, make it smooth and presentable. You know, it's marketing, right? Like, you're marketing yourself, right? Like, I think you're people... building your brand, right? Like yes. in today's day and age, it's it's the it's the walking the that you no longer can walk into you know, so the door and, you know, shake someone's hand to be like, you know, hi, my name's Alex. I'm really interested, you know, in this right. opportunity and we're building a connection. So my own, not my only option, an option that I've, I've seen work well is yep. building that brand. Right. And so, and totally. so by the time they're, you know, your resume, your portfolio, um, it's clear, you know, it's, it's just all a part of your brand, whether it's a color scheme or what, what have you. Yeah. Here's a question for you. Like, um, I'm kind of going off script here, but I'm, I'm always yeah. curious, you know, there, there's the like headshot or no headshot, right? Like I, I just, I prefer not to have it. I, I just rather look at this stuff. Like I, I don't, you, you know what I mean? Like, I, I just want to, I just want to know your credentials. I, I don't want to be like looking at someone's face when I'm looking at a resume. Like, I, I don't know. So I'm with you. I'm on a no headshot bus as well. Um, mm -hmm. for two reasons, because it, it, I'm so like, I think, what is it like psychologically your eyes move like in a certain way across, you know, a document or an image. I don't know that much about psychology. So call me out if, if you, if I'm wrong, Yeah, no. but like your eyes kind of move in a certain way. Right. And so if you, so two things, if you have an image, like you are unfocusing my attention on the important stuff, which is the body of your resume. And now I'm looking at your picture. And now as a human, I've got natural unconscious biases, biases. Yeah, and whether or not I am you know, consciously making a decision on my thoughts on, on your picture, it, it's happening back here. And I have to be like, okay, yeah, that doesn't matter. Right? right. Um, and it's just, it's just like either why is that picture there? That seems unnecessary, like all that stuff. And I know regionally it's different, like in America versus maybe yes. Europe, Europe or, is or, or much, much Asia. more. Yeah, totally, totally, totally. When, when but, I get the resumes uh, from outside the U S with pictures, 80% of them are Europe. Yeah. Yeah. I will say, again, going back to personal brand, though, especially if you're an art creative, um, you know, you can have a fun but clean resume format. And if you want to, so no, no, like headshot. I don't need a headshot. That's LinkedIn, right? Yeah. Um, but if you like have created a fun little avatar, um, 
put them on our website. Like I yeah. love that kind of stuff. Yeah. Right. Right. And, and the LinkedIn link too, right? Like it's a good point too. Like you said, like, yeah. you know, have your LinkedIn, you know, cause it's always kind of interesting too, just to check out someone's LinkedIn and just see if they sync up. Right. They'd be like, well, well the resume has got missing stuff that LinkedIn has yeah. and like, what's going on here. Right. Like for continuity, yeah. um, it's nice to have LinkedIn at the top and to see if there's yeah. shared connections, stuff like that. Yeah. Oh, totally. Right. So like you've got like portfolio or website or GitHub or whatever, and then, you know, LinkedIn contact information, all of us recruiters lived on link, live on LinkedIn, whether we like it or not. So yes. yeah, we're looking. <laughs> yeah. So much time on LinkedIn. Yes, definitely. Um, so what about someone, you know, in the industry right now who wants to go to that next step in their career, that next stage, like, you know, what kind of advice do you have for them to kind of level up? Uh, as they yeah. Say? Um, so I think my advice is, is pretty general. Um, mm -hmm. we're regardless of what industry or, or, or whatever, or what role, um, the first thing is don't assume your manager knows your your goals and ambitions, like your career goals and ambitions, unless you've had that conversation with them. Um, of course, a yeah. good manager and leader should be asking you, you know, during your one on ones, you know, what are what are your short term goals? What are your long term goals? How can I, you know, help advance your career? What do you want in your career? Yeah. Um, but like to me, I found being vocal about what my expectations are um, for my career with my manager and just being like, I, like, I want to keep moving up. That's totally something that I want to do. Um, I've got a friend who is very happy in the senior individual contributor role, which is fantastic because she's like, I want to, you know, I want to be able to, you know, log off at the end of the day, turn my computer off and spend time with my kids. Right. And right. that can be, I mean, in any role, but she's like, I like this because the role that I'm in gives me work-life balance. And I don't want to move up because I don't want the extra responsibilities of managing a team. Like I want my, anyway, yeah, so being yeah, vocal, totally. whatever that is, right. Because your career aspirations don't necessarily have to be moving up like from mid to senior to to lead to manager to director but just being vocal so your your manager your leader can support you mm -hmm. um and then of course like be realistic in your expectations so um if you want to go from a, an individual contributor role to a leader or manager role um be proactive in taking on new projects, new initiatives, um, work towards your goals before, especially in a big company. And, and it is what it is. I hate to say it. It's, it's the same thing that I've experienced and I'm not going to knock it because I understand why the process is this way. Right. Do it before. Like if you want to be in a leadership role, start mentoring people, start leading people, even though it's not your direct responsibility, you don't have that manager title. Um, to, to me, it showed my leaders, um, it proved that I was serious. Um, mm -hmm. I was taking the initiative. I was spending, you know, extra time to, to, um, learn and develop my skills. So when I was given the opportunity to, um, interview for a leadership role, I was able to say, Hey, no, I've not been a manager before. No, I've not been a leader, but look at what I've done, um, that align with these leadership goals, these leadership expectations, skills, responsibilities, um, and it helped me advance to the next stage in my career. So, um, yeah. And, and then of course, yep. you know, going back to networking is when you are able to have champions, um, at your company. So whether it's your manager, someone else that you partner with, um, you know, another individual in another, um, saying, Hey, yeah, I've worked, you know, I've worked with Alex. Um, mm -hmm. I think she'd be a good fit for this role, or I've seen her perform those duties in a successful way. You know, those champions can, can go to bat for you when, um, your employer is gathering feedback for a potential, uh, promotion. Yeah, no, that, that's, that's great, great advice. And, and I think, um, you know, too, there's, there's lots of stuff out there about like, and you can Google it or chat GPT, but you know, about kind of taking control of your one-on-ones, right? Like, Hey, uh, when you have those, don't just be like, I don't know. I just did stuff, right? Like be like, Hey, you know, help set an agenda. If, if your manager is cool with that and, and bring notes in for like stuff you've done and, and questions you have. So you're being proactive versus mm -hmm. reactive. And I, you know, I think that helps. And then also yeah, like when you're doing the job before you have the title or portion of that job, it makes it easier to be like, yeah, I can see that person in that versus like, 
I want it and I'm not going to do anything towards that thing until you give me that yeah. thing. Right. Like it's, you yeah. do it and they're like, Oh wow, that's a no brainer. Let's promote that person into um, whatever type role. Right. So, yeah. you know, look for those opportunities to stretch and, and give examples of yourself doing that because I think it makes it then easier to get promoted. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. I like the setting the agenda thing too. I don't know any manager who would be, you know, upset about you sending, right. setting an agenda. I'd be like, oh, I'd be like, oh my God, fantastic. Like this right. actually makes my job easier. Right. Yeah. Like, <laughs> right. I just have to show here. up and give guess. feedback. Yeah. That's great. That's, that's all I got to do. I don't have to drive this thing. Perfect. That's one less thing on my list of 90 things to do today. Go and for it. shows leadership qualities. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You're taking initiative, right? You're like, I want to I'm, I'm being serious about this. I'm not just going to be like, give me the thing until I do yeah. that. I'm not going to do the thing. Give me the thing. Um, yeah. I'm curious about the topic of change. Like what's the biggest one that you've been through? Yep. Uh, so still going through it. Um, the biggest change that I've been through in my career um, is unfortunately getting laid off. And I think a lot of people can resonate with this. It's, it's real tough. Yeah. Um, it's real tough on, um, your ego, your self-worth, uh, potentially your wallet, of course. So there's a lot of things, a lot of things happening when, and this is my, this was the first time I've been laid off. Um, and right. so just navigating through that it, emotionally, to be honest with you, um, oh, has, tough. has been, yeah, the biggest thing for me. And of course there's ups and downs, you know, the silver lining is, um, I, I'm so thankful for the time that I had at my last company and how much I was able to learn and grow. Um, mm -hmm. I wouldn't change a damn thing. Absolutely nothing. If, if, if someone were to, if you were to tell me on my first day at PlayStation as a contractor that, Hey, you know, at the end of this, you unfortunately are going to be laid off and, you know, you won't have another job lined up and it's, it's going to be real tough. Um, I don't think I'd change anything. I, I really wouldn't. I, I just, yeah. And the support um, that I've gotten from my friends and family, the support that I've gotten from the the games community of people that I, I don't know personally, like, that is probably the most touching thing. So with right. all the downs, you know, again, there are ups, there are ebbs and flows, um, but navigating through this massive, it's a life change. It's a life yeah. change has, has been um, a learning experience, we'll say. Yeah, no, and there are a lot of resources out there and people trying to help each other, you know, because we had the 10,000 last year. We're like, okay, hopefully that's behind us. And, you know, and then this year started out and it's like, holy shit, like we're going to break that yeah. record fast. Yeah. So um, a lot of great resources. A lot of people band, uh, banded together. I mean, it's amazing. I don't, I can't see any other industry doing what the people in the games industry um, have done for yeah. the community. Yeah. Yeah. You, you see those people on LinkedIn, you know, whether it's Amir and all these other people, you know, sharing resources and posting jobs yeah. and they come out and um, you know, all these other kind of things. Yeah. You're right. Like, you know, I can't see people in the oil refinery business doing that or yeah, yeah. whatever. I'm just like <laughs> yeah. randomly picking an industry, but you, you know, um, but you know, you're right. It, you know, yeah, just because like there, well, there is a sense of community, right? Like w when you make mm -hmm. games, it's not, you know, millions of people, especially in the U.S. doing this. It's it's smaller and like, you know, like the Chuck example, right? Like, oh, you work there, yeah. this person, right? Like, so there's kind of a, a sense of community, which makes it um, hard, but then it makes it useful for people to try to band together and try and help people mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give someone? that has fears and doubts around making a change, right? Or dealing with like what you're going through, like what, what kind of things can you share from your experience? Yes. So two things. Um, first and foremost, um, mental health check. Imposter syndrome is real. Um, it doesn't matter who you are, what level you're at. I have talked to multiple people um, and, and so many women, especially who are in executive roles um, mm -hmm. who are like, oh, yeah, I deal with imposter syndrome all the time. And I'm like, oh, it, it's weird. It's a double edged sword of like, oh, my God, at least I'm not the only one. And then also like, oh, crap, this is something I'm going to have to, you know, remind myself um, and, yeah. and kind of work on potentially the rest the rest of my life, which is OK. Um, right. Because it, I think it's important to have that um, 
you know, a positive self outlook and and being able to to talk yourself through things like that when you when you do feel that way, when you do have those feelings right. and know that um you then go back to leaning on your your support network, right? So if if you're feeling that way and you do have a mentor and it's always wonderful to have a mentor, um you know, leaning on those people. Um but I'd say, you know, imposter syndrome is real and and um try not to doubt yourself um and know that for every you know, bad day, there's always at least one or more good days. So, you know, that yeah. there's always tomorrow. And then one of the, um, like my mottos, I guess, or like phrases that I try and live by, maybe not a motto, but a phrase that I try and live by, um, is change, change is the only constant. So get comfortable totally. in the uncomfortable. Yeah. So if you prepare for change, if you like, if you prepare, prepare for change and it happens, then you're like, okay, I'm prepared. I have the tools in my tool belt. Right. Like I, I, I can adapt. I'm not shocked. Right. Um, you know, it could be like, oh, I wasn't expecting that, but okay, now let's recalibrate and, and move on from here. Um, mm -hmm. And knowing that everything is temporary. So that can go yes. both ways. Everything right. bad and everything good is temporary. Right. right. So right. Um, in, in times of change, this is a, I don't remember who said this, but I have it written down in like my, my affirmations that I like will go through when I need a little reminder. Yeah. Um, and it says, you may not be able to control what's going on around you, but you can control how you're experiencing and reacting to it. So I can't mm -hmm. control, I can only control as far as my nose, right? I can control myself. I can, and that's yeah. it. Um, I can't control what you're doing. Um, I can't control what the person outside here is doing. Um, but I can control how I'm experiencing it and how I react to those things, of, you know, those, whatever it's change or whatever. And so just knowing that, like, I am in control of myself and, and that, and that in itself can help, help make, help make a better situation in, in times of change or like times of, of challenge. Yeah. Or, no, it, or a learning it, situation. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Like, like, you know, not to get philosophical, but you know, this, this too shall pass, right? Like, right. Like yeah. as horrible as this is with time, this, you know, this will pass. And, um, Victor Frankl, who did a lot, um, you know, he was a psychiatrist and a doctor and, you know, he was in the freaking Holocaust and shit. Like, you know, he wrote a book, yeah. Man's Search for Meet, Man's Search for Meeting, Meaning, mm -hmm. to talk about like that between event and response there's a gap right and, and you have there's that gap where you can decide how you respond right mm. and, and do you go this way or do you go that way you know and, and you can go down that you know rabbit hole of just learning about that stuff and and all kinds of areas just to understand how to respond to things and not just downward spiral and you know beat yourself up and get angry but just like choose that response and yeah there's there's all kinds of stuff i i save all kinds of quotes when i see stuff online just because you just want to mm -hmm. think about those kind of things um just so that you're better equipped right because like the old days of you know get the job and i'll work there 40 50 years and get the gold watch mm -hmm. and go to florida and play golf like like those days are gone those are long gone right like so yeah. the, only thing, the only thing that's constant is change so mm -hmm. you can either embrace it or you can put your head in the sand and get your ass kicked all the time when change happens. So you pick, right? Like you have to learn how to embrace it and kind of roll with the punches and figure out how to evolve and change and adapt versus like digging in and like, Oh, I'm not going to do it. Yeah. yeah like so. digging your heels and being like, Oh, yeah. like, no, I'm, you know, not me. And that's fine. Yeah. But especially in like this day and age, like with technology and how oh, fast, yeah, like right. just technology is changing. Right. right. I mean, like, I, like kids these days, um, <laughs> right. like, right. I mean, they're growing up on like, on this amazing technology, like these little, this like three-year-old knows how, how to, how to manage, like to go through a, a phone better than I can and, and use yeah. a computer better than I can. And, um, right. yeah. So it, it, I think it goes with any like facet of, of life. Um, yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah. And as an old Gen Xer, I could tell you, yeah, you know, <laughs> have to adapt, uh, adapt or die. Um, yeah. That's a little extreme, but yeah. Um, 
<laughs> so what are you? Well, I mean the, yeah. proverb, the proverbial die, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, like, yeah, right, you know, yeah. like, <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, yeah. I will throttle back here and kind of go. What are you curious about in the industry right now? How, how about that? How about video games? What do you want to tell me about? What are you so, curious? So it's, it's so funny because I feel I'm, I can get very philosophical. So this pod could have gone like in a completely different direction, and we'll <laughs> we'll turn into podcasts on that because like I I love just getting philosophical. But anyways, yeah, yeah. Um, me too. So what am I curious about? in the industry well selfishly i guess right you know talking about change and layoffs and stuff like that um so i've i've heard that this is like the biggest shakeup in the industry thus far as far as like you know again where the industry is um the amount of layoffs you know company shifts and so i'm curious um just like how how all of these changes layoffs um you know big studio acquisitions and mergers um closures how will this and i i obviously don't have the answer i don't know any if anyone does right now we can pontificate but like how will this change the landscape of the ind- like how the industry does business um mm-hmm. and how games are made and what types of games will be made or what types of games will continue to be successful? Um, of course, you know, profitable, whatever. But like, yeah. I'm just curious how this is going to change the landscape of the industry as a whole and like how games are made and what types of games um, are going to be made. Yeah. No. Th- yeah. Those th- those are big questions. And um, as somebody who recently celebrated their 35th year of getting in the game industry, which makes me sound like a a freaking dinosaur um but you know, 35 it. years ago i was answering hotline phones at the turbo graphics i'm like yeah it's a part-time job i'll get my portfolio down i'll go work for leo burnett and be advertising whatever and here i am like this this is a big change right like yeah there was 07 08 09 and you know that recession and it, for people that were working then like the 401ks just got crushed and all that yeah. kind of stuff um but you know in terms of layoffs yeah, this is a big shift. And I, I don't I don't think it's like we just have to weather it, it'll go back to exactly as it was. It's gonna be we're weathering it and it's just the market's gonna change, right? And like how games get, you know, made and marketed and discovered and distributed and everything is just, just going through this evolution and there's you know, with platforms and genres and, and all kinds of things. So yeah, it, it's it's a wild ride right now, you, you know, and then there's AI factoring into things and, um, you know, hyper casual, like I, I played some hyper casual games where it's, you can, it's like, what is this? It's not even a hard game, but like it's, they get millions yeah. of downloads, but they have banner ads and, and they can make money. And it's like, wow, this, this feels so just uh, sophomoric, but like it, it's making money. So like, yeah, just being open to like what these different models are and, and how games are made and like how teams work on things and distributed models and all this kind of stuff going on with different time zones and different people. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's, it's an interesting time. It's definitely not boring. I, I think something I've, I've noticed or that, you know, kind of like taking into consideration with, you know, casual games, cozy games, mobile games, that kind of thing is the what we consider what is considered a gamer has expanded right so right. probably yeah. you know you growing up who was gaming it was a very probably a very small population right. of of your you know your elementary or like middle or high school students like they were yeah. nerds and like they yeah, weren't cool right. and and again i'm just right. stereotyping here no, obviously arcades don't and, and home consoles yeah, right? and it was like you know stranger things it was, it was like this little section of people yeah. now it's like a much broader audience yeah yeah i mean and because games have been around for a long time i mean you've got you've got the old, like older generation like you've got boomers on their phone you know gaming yep. when farm i didn't play farmville on facebook right? i remember from farmville came out when i was in college and my friend is like just playing farmville all day and i was like <laughs> and again right, right like right. whether you consider her a gamer or not she was playing a game Right. You've now got people who grew up, you know, on games in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Um, our generations it, are having kids, of course, and then they're going to. Mm-hmm. And so if I love games, if we we love games, why wouldn't I want to share that um, with my kid um, and, you yeah. know, bond in that way? So and then the types of games that kids are into these days with the whole 
I mean, a whole decade's worth of, of previous games behind them, right? Like when games came out, I, when games came out for you, it was the first, like, this was kind of the first, like the first iteration, right? right and yeah, like, yeah. like this, this new thing so, came yeah. out of the scene. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, whoa, what is this? Yeah. Yeah. So there's just so many different ways to game now and like what is considered a gamer. Um, right. So I, yeah, just seeing where the industry is going to go with that is, is going to be interesting and, and how they kind of lean into that. Right, because people are like, oh, I'm not a gamer. Do you have anything on your phone? Oh, yeah, I play Candy Crush two hours a day, right? Like, well, you, you kind of play games, right? You, you know, yeah, no, you're not sitting for four hours playing Madden on a, you know, on a PS5 or, or an Xbox, but yeah, you know, so there is a much wider palette of gamers and like, what are these different audiences and how do you serve them? And, you know, the thing I always think about too is like, everyone has so much stuff bombarding them for their time right like like there's this attention economy right do i watch netflix do i watch you know youtube do do i play a game do i read a book you know there, there's so much stuff fighting for that time it's like how do you make things that are meaningful to get people's attention when they have s mm -hmm. so many options because you know back in the 80s like we had four channels in an arcade yeah and in television yeah that was it you had right you know so it was much easier to focus where now it's just like oceans of options so it's like yeah it's wild it is wild what threats or concerns uh do you have about the industry and kind of what's going on or you know stuff like that hey if you're enjoying this can you click on the like and subscribe buttons for me it'll really help out thanks i don't i mean threats i don't i mean I, i've been in the industry for over six years and i live long enough but um I don't really know. I'm not really sure what threats. I think the concern I have is that like the old adage of like, if we do, what is it? Like if we do things the way that they're, that they've always been done, we'll continue to get the same, same results. results. Yeah. 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 So I, I think that is just a concern of mine. Um, mm -hmm. But I see so many other, like, so many good developers were laid off over the last like two years. And they're like, I'm sick of this. But like, right. I've been in this, you know, for two, three decades, I'm done. I am starting my own studio. And so like, right. we've seen the rise of indies. Right. And I think mm -hmm. like, that's, to me, that's an opportunity, but like, yeah, I, yeah. I just, I kind of, I'm, I, I feel like we're watching this shift as it happens. Um, and it's, it's very exciting to me to see really good people. Um, start some really cool companies yeah i, I had uh been from midwest games on and it was kind of like y yeah you lay out some people like you know somebody with a chip on their shoulder they're gonna go out and, and make something like really awesome right to like i'll show you like check this mm -hmm. out right so yeah it's curious to see how how what sprouts out of you know these layoffs and things that are happening how it's going to kind of Re shift and reconfigure the industry and things um yeah yeah and i think a lot of people who have been in the weeds of the game development cycle but not in a position of um like leadership i guess yeah. can now be like like right if they're like I, I like if we changed production in this in this way or that way but they don't have um the they don't have a seat at the table of this large company well i'm right. gonna start my own and I'm going to do it how I feel is the right way. Um, and I, I think that's great. I think that's great. Yeah, because yeah, a, a lot of times some of your best role models are like the anti-role model. Like, yeah. wow, that that person sucks. And like when they do this, <laughs> they should do that. And when if I get my chance, I'm going to do it that way, not that way. Because they've showed me showed me all the wrong ways to do things that yeah. I, I almost have like a blueprint on how to do things right. Because, yeah, there are some bad people out there people just don't know what the hell they're doing and you're just like wow now i know what not to do so i will avoid doing sure. what this person does um yeah and, and opportunities we kind of talked about that like you, you know what are you most excited about like what's the biggest thing like these new studios new things are going to happen with people mm -hmm. who are building new things after going through layoffs you know oh yeah absolutely absolutely i am so stoked to see like all of these indies pop up. I'm stoked to see like the rise of the double A game versus the triple A game. Right. Um, that's what I'm super excited to see. Right. Um, and I mean, we, because right, like we go back to what it, you know, what is a gamer, what type of game is, is, you know, and, and I feel like, and 
rightfully so, we've put these AAA games on a pedestal because they're amazing and beautiful and gorgeous and and, and well done right. um, and fun to play. Um, but that's not the only game that's out there. Um, yeah, totally. So. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I follow this uh, newsletter called is it Game Discover or Game Discovery Co? And it kind of talks about, you know, indie games and, and, and these one or, or small, small, small people teams and how they make a game and how they find a niche and how they get discovered. And then, you know, it's doing 50K units a month at, you know, fourteen ninety nine, and they get their 70% and it's a small little little team. It could be anywhere in the world, right? Like it doesn't have to be, you know, the, yeah. the California yeah. or whatnot. Um, you know, that's exciting. This is like, wow, right? Like, you know, because the AAA is just... You know, because of the production values and the the length and the storyline is it's, it's become yeah. like an arms war, right? Like people just they're just the break evens have to just be going insane. Like we have to sell ten million units to break even. Like well, what kind yeah. of model is that, right? Like that's just yeah. r- rough, right? So, like, what can we do? Yeah, and most people don't finish games, right? So, like, do you really need a you know eighty hour single player experience? No, maybe not if, if for that amount of money, you know. So, yeah, it just has we kind of reconfigure and rethink things it's it's kind of interesting to see what's going to happen um what about thoughts on ar vr mixed reality any any kind of thinking about that yeah so i do want to preface that i am i am not the ar vr mr mr ai expert um but i am a human right in in this world in this industry and and it's Mm -hmm. just um again we're going back right to like change change is constant this is just change in technology so um it was really cool. So when I was um when I was a university recruiter at um police station, I I visited the University of Utah um mm. for I think it was like their their um game development uh program capstone or something like that. Um yeah. and they also have a healthcare division or like uh like a medical healthcare it's division GAP. as well. It, yeah, it's GAP G A A G A P P and they have a very key st- capstones and they have a very Good program. Like I used to know Kenny Green, who would run that over at University of Utah. Yes, me yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. That's yes. That's and there you go. See, yeah. big industry, small world. So, right. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's where I learned a lot more of like the crossover of um, AR, VR, um, MR between mm-hmm. like healthcare and like healthcare and games, right? Yeah. Um, kind of these students were creating games in in AR VR with like patients in mind like um like physical therapy um like simulation and practices <laughs> excuse me i know that like i think doctors use um AR to like simulate surgery right so right you don't have i mean i don't I, again like at me in the comments if i'm completely speaking out of turn i'm sure they still work on obviously cadavers and everything like that but like right. you can perform you can practice and practice and practice these surgeries mm-hmm. um you know with this new technology um so you know as far as like gaming and stuff i think that's super fun and and really cool but yeah. like for me personally what i think is really cool is just how this technology is advancing different industries um, mm-hmm. and just like human knowledge and human capabilities. I'm at Level X. We, you know, we make video games for doctors and our parent company, Brain Lab, is very big in the operating room space for hardware and software, you know, for surgeons. And like, we developed a project with them called Explore Spine, which is on the Magic Leap 2 hardware, which, you know, it it was not a smart play in the consumer end because the hardware is very expensive and there was no brand name, but for, uh, enterprise and, and hospitals and stuff, it's very powerful because it's AR. So you wear glasses and it's passed through, but then you can layer the graphics over the lenses also, and you can do some really cool shit. And we developed this project for residents in training for spine surgery to be able to practice and learn about surgery, uh, you know, in a non-invasive you mess up, nobody mm-hmm. gets hurt kind of way. There's no cadaver involved. And you can put these glasses on and put the magic leap over and, and learn about tightening screws and, and vertebrae and all this kind of interesting stuff in a consequence-free, um, medically accurate, because because we have medical yeah. experts on staff, way. So like, yeah. there's all these areas just outside of that traditional gaming where you can kind of mash up you know, medicine and gaming or surgery and gaming and all these kind of things. Um, it, it make it interesting too. Like a, a lot of times it, it feels kind of hacked or 
the visual fidelity is not there and, and it's kind of, it feels kind of meh, but like if, if you do it the right way and, and it looks exciting and it's, it's visually stimulating and the UI and the UX flows and stuff, you can make it really engaging and that's a great way to yeah. learn, right? Because like, you know, being a doctor is almost like being a gamer. It was like, I, I got to figure out this problem. I, I have to yeah. go through this decision tree and figure out how to make this thing work. And so like, why not mash up gaming and medical in interesting ways that, you know, help people. So yeah, yeah. Take on it. But yeah, yeah, it was cool. Cause I, I put the magic leap two on. I'm like, wow, I'm doing this. Thing That's this cool. Um, and yes, university of Utah, fantastic program. I've hired people out of there and that gap lab does a lot of interesting stuff in that space, which it's an acronym and I can't remember it, but, um, yeah, I can't, yeah. Re- I can't remember either. So what's been one of your favorite projects to work on? Okay. So my favorite project to work on, um, so this, this was the, was, this was a project, if you will, um, that this was the door that like opened, like to help me get to the rest of my career. So when I moved over, so as a university recruiter, um, when I first started at PlayStation for like mm-hmm. five months, I helped hire our 2018 interns, um, you know, kick cool. that off. And, you know, then summer was over and, and everything was great. Um, and my manager at the time had heard that they were in need on the game development side um, to hire. And this is going back to, remember I said there were like two two groups um, in San right. Diego. Yeah. There right. was San Diego Studios and then the other support group, Visual Arts. Um, mm-hmm. Visual Arts was in need of a dedicated recruiter um, to staff up for uh, a little project called The Last of Us Part 2 for the PS5, <laughs> wow. partnering with Naughty Dog. <laughs> wow. Just a little one. <laughs> just, a, just a little one. Um, Damn. So it really, you know, being able to um, hire for that project, prove myself on on that project with that studio, right. um, you know, form partnerships with these hiring managers and, and hiring teams and game develop. And this was like clearly pre-pandemic. Um, yeah. it, it, that that started the trajectory of the rest of my career in games that, that just solidified cemented my love for game development recruiting because before that, yes, I was in games, but I wasn't, um, uh, hiring interns. And this was like, no, like I am hiring for a specific game that this group is partnering, you know, with one of the, you know, biggest name studios, you know, on, you know, at PlayStation. And, And so, yeah, that was, that was just kind of like a notch in my belt that I look back and I'm like, how did I get so lucky? Um, and then, um, you know, again, being that it was, it was before the pandemic, um, we were all in the studio, we were all in the office. And so like there, and you can ask anyone in that studio, they, at one point saw me just running through the halls back and forth, whether it was, you know, chasing a hiring manager, making sure people were at their meetings on time, um, you know, running to greet candidates for their interviews, um, you know, grabbing coffee. There she goes again. Yeah. 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 (laughs) And like, and like I, okay. So I'm, (laughs) I'm a very active individual. I have ADHD with a capital H and hyperactive. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and and if and you know and it's games like I'm not in like right. like I'm in casual clothes I'm in it I'm in my right. PlayStation T-shirt jeans and my chucks so like I can right. run and so <laughs> if it is more efficient for me to get point A to point B by running like right. bet your bottom dollar I'm running like right. I'm running through that studio and so yes I, <laughs> I <laughs> that's awesome gateway get out of my way yeah. I got shit to do. Alex, like, <laughs> and yeah. sometimes people would like see me, you know, running through the hall that, you know, their office door is open and they're like, oh, she's coming for me. And like, I'd see them start <laughs> to get up and like, you know, I'd be like, your candidate's waiting. Like, <laughs> like okay, she's coming. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was a really, really, really fun project. And, and yeah. I just look back on that time working with those people at visual arts with um, just a sparkle in my eye. Like I, I just, yeah. I just love those folks to the you know bottom of my heart just because they were great, you know, great people to work with. Um, but also that was this, the start of my career. Yeah, no. And, and you're like, 
more of this, please. Yes, I, yeah. I want to do this. This is this is my my zone. This is my place. I, I want to do more of this. So yeah. yeah, and then working on not just you know hiring people for a game, but hiring people for that game. You know mm -hmm. that had to be hugely rewarding. So like you're watching TV and like yeah, I worked in that game. I hired yeah. Uh, da, 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 you know, um, yeah. That's always nice. Yeah. And it was cool too because we partnered. We partnered with, or I should say, we am not there anymore. Um, but visual arts. Well, we probably yeah. when I was there, right? Uh, with you know, partnered with um, with uh, almost all of their first party studios. So that was the biggest project I worked on. Probably okay. the biggest project period. But like you know, we were hiring again, right? In partnership, not only with Naughty Dog, in partnership with Santa Monica Studio, with Insomniac, with Gorilla Games. Um, and so, uh, thanks wow. to, you know, and again, not just visual arts, but under, under the PlayStation studios, um, creative, uh, umbrella, we'll say there was also sound music and in creative and like, I was hiring, you know, people for the sound and, and music. Team. These are award-winning teams. Like these were right. the teams that you see going up, winning awards. awards yeah. But I'm like, I hired like 75% of those people on stage. Like, is this real life? Like, who, like, what God did I appease in my last lifetime to allow me this opportunity? So yeah, I just, yeah. I, I am just so thrilled with, 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 um, the opportunities that, that I, that I was given, um, you know, uh, yeah. when I first started in games. No, no, that, that, that had to be very addictive and very satisfying and very exciting. Yeah. So yeah. Um, yeah, w when we were in office, th th we were in an area that had like glass walls or like glass rooms, and people would always laugh because, like, when I did interviews, I, I would get crazy from just sitting all the time. So I had my my AirPods on, and I would be like pacing and walking and talking to people, and people would like point and laugh at me. But I'm like, I, I can't sit all day. I'm gonna lose my damn mind. Yeah. Like, I I, I got to walk and talk. So I'm like bouncing back and forth in this this room. Um, but yeah, yeah, just bringing that excitement. Um, I it's contagious and other people get excited and people get, um, people want to do good shit and yeah. It yeah. Happens, so that's cool. Yeah. Um, what's a funny or odd story from working in the game industry? So, well, it wasn't funny to me, but, um, the pre pandemic 2019, I, uh, was sick. So I was working from home that day. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I am on Instagram that evening. Uh, and lo and behold, uh, Kojima had visited, um, mm -hmm. the San Diego location, uh, and was like right outside the recruiting office. And uh, you're like, oh. yeah, mm -hmm. so I totally missed that. I probably wouldn't have been able to like go and see him, per but like if my face would have been like pressed against the glass, <laughs> but no, instead I had to like, be sick. Um, <laughs> Damn but, cold. um, I think like, I think what was, I don't know if this counts, but like, so the PlayStation five was released in November, 2020. We we're all working from home yep. and, um, PlayStation, um, gave all their employees, uh, the PS five console that was, that was, that was gifted to us. Right. Um, but I'll get for go. those who don't remember, I was hard, hard. Yeah, I'm sure they do. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So not only like was I getting it on the day, like I, I, I was getting one period on the day it was I getting. Get it. I think yeah. it was like it was like I don't know exactly when it was. It was in, I just remember it was in November, and I remember that it was going to be like around ten thirty, um, you know, Pacific Standard Time. Again, I'm here on the West Coast. Yeah. And so it's like I remember, and my, and my um my home office at the time faced uh, a window which I could see my front door. Right. And so it was like just after, just before, after whatever, around 10.30, I see the FedEx guy, you know, coming around the corner. He is carrying a large box. Oh, <laughs> I am screaming. I am screaming. And I like, ah! and like, I can see the dudes, like he can hear me from inside the house. And he, because he, know, he, he like, knows what he's, he knows what he's about to drop. Like he knows right. it's a PS5. Right. And I'm like, over there, I'm like, yes, yes, where are you? <laughs> <laughs> he's like i, I got something right yeah, yeah i think yeah. i gave him a good chuckle so <laughs> yeah he went home after work he's like hey i got a story i showed up this house she was losing her mind before i even got to the she door was losing her mind yeah yeah but it's like it's a ps5 which is like 
the firstborn right now, so it's pretty yeah. hot commodity. So yeah, no, that'd be exciting. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, speaking of games, like what games are you playing on your PS5 or other platforms or mobile or PC? Like what, what are you playing right now? Anything you're excited about? Yeah. So actually none of the above. Um, okay. I am right now getting into uh, board games and tabletop games. Oh. Um, yeah. So that's new for me. Okay. Um, I was recently introduced to Wingspan um, and it's that board game um, about birds. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. It's literally like wingspan, like the wingspan of a bird. Yeah. Um, and I turned into a crazy bird lady during the pandemic because, as I mentioned, <laughs> my um, office was facing um, uh, a window. window. I had yeah. placed a bird feeder. I was uh, feeding the crows. I was feeding the bird. I was right. I have a crow. I have a crow tattoo here. I've got my love birds here. Like I'm a crazy. <laughs> I'm a crazy lady. Um, so I got, I've been getting really into wingspan, um, huh, which is, is really cool for me. Cause I didn't grow up. Well, I just didn't grow up with games at all, like especially tabletop games. And so, um, just the way your brain kind of works during, you know, a, a, a tabletop game or, or a board game. Um, yeah. it, it's, it's fun. Right. Um, yeah. And then I am getting into, I guess I should say I'm about to start my first ever um, D&D campaign, uh, oh. which is also very new for me. And so um, doing cool. that with some with some LinkedIn friends this fall, um, mm -hmm. really fun building my character. Um, they, most of them have played before. Um, apparently our DM is absolutely epic. And so I am just like, I'm thrilled to kind of like dive head first into this character, the storyline. Um, yeah. So I'm, wow. I'm trying my hand in, um, non-computer and console games at the moment. Is it going to be uh, in person or online? Online. Uh, so online. we've got okay. folks, um, on the West coast, we've got, I think, Gosh, where on the East Coast, mid Midwest, and then I think, and then someone in London. So we've kind of got like people all over, uh -huh. all over. Um, so it'll definitely be virtual. Cool. And quick plug: I have a friend, Curtis Schmidt, who has a show called Product of Play, and he's focused on doing interviews with developers in the tabletop and board game space. So. Ooh. Yeah, uh, he has guests coming out in that space, and he was just at Gen Con and um, interviewed some people. So, like, yeah, if you're in nice. that spot, product of play is is definitely worth checking out. Nice. Um, is there anything I should have asked you about but didn't? I don't really have anything, like, valuable. Like, I don't have any, like, extra piece of advice. So I'm going to show you my shirt instead because I love it, and I think okay. I everyone else something. will, too. Yeah. Huh? So do you see it says um, <laughs> dead inside but caffeinated? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I like too. You got the skeleton too. That's cool. And the yeah. skeleton and everything. I feel like um, a lot of us in games can relate to that. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, yes. well, like not all the time, but just, you know, some yeah. days are harder than others. But you got your coffee, you got your tea or whatever your caffeine yeah. of, of, you know, whatever your caffeine of choice is. Um, so yes. <laughs> that is a silly answer to your question. But like, <laughs> I think it's relevant sometimes. Yeah, it's usually drip coffee, espresso, drip coffee for me, and I try and keep it to three. But yeah, that that's kind of like yes. my my thing. Like, oh, my head! Oh, I need, I need, I need a fix. I need it. Yeah. Um, so, where can people find you online? Uh, you know, uh, websites, socials, LinkedIn is probably a big one, right? Like, follow you LinkedIn. on LinkedIn. Yeah. Yep. Tom, follow me on LinkedIn. If you search Alex Gombos, um, you will find me. Um, I have my Ask Alex Anything AAA series on there um, yeah. where I, you know, try and give advice um, to candidates or those, you know, um, looking for career advice, resume advice, you know, kind of application advice. Um, and if you go to the featured section of my profile, you'll find um, my most the the post or i should say like the um featured post the first featured post on the featured section of my profile that was a tongue twister Ooh. um will list every single one of um the ask alex anything uh series posts so i, I right. highly recommend you check that out yep cool. and yeah, give me like a call chronological. if you so choose yeah yeah yeah, yeah in chron will. chronological yep yeah well great well yeah this has been this has been a blast I, i'm glad we were able to connect and do this and um yeah. 
yeah, this, this has been fun. Really, really fun. Thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate it.